The safety glasses cabinet is located by the door you enter the lab through. Safety glasses must be worn at all times while in the lab, even if you're just watching a video or taking a test, and no chemicals are out. You may provide your own safety glasses as long as they are ANSI C87.1 certified. Prescription glasses or sunglasses are not an approved substitute for safety glasses. A dress code is enforced in lab for your safety. Hazards in the lab include spilled chemicals and broken glass. Shirts with sleeves are required to protect your upper chest. Shirts cannot be so short that your belly is exposed. Long pants or a long skirt must be worn to protect your legs. Shorts are not allowed, even if they cover your knees. Closed toe and closed heel shoes are required to protect your feet. Sandals, flip-flops, and Crocs do not meet this definition. When you first enter the lab, put on your safety glasses. Before you sit down, place any unneeded books and coats in the appropriate place. This is by the emergency exit opposite from where you enter. Only bring your lab, something to write with, and a calculator if needed to your lab bench. It is not appropriate to place books or coats on the floor as they are a trip hazard. Hair must be tied back during lab. If you are using a Bunsen burner, hair can easily catch on fire without you knowing. If your hair is long enough, it can get contaminated with chemicals that you are using. Also, the material you are wearing may elevate your risk of catching fire. As you see in the demonstration, synthetic fabric is much more susceptible to catching fire than cotton. If it does catch on fire, it may melt to your skin. Notice the location of the fire extinguisher. The fire extinguishers in the chemistry labs at PCC are ABC type extinguishers and are appropriate for use on most common combustible liquids or electrical type fires. In the event of a fire, you should first pull the fire alarm and notify your instructor. If the fire extinguisher is appropriate for use on the fire and you are unsure how to properly use it, please allow your instructor or someone with training to operate the fire extinguisher. A fire extinguisher should not be used to put out a fire on a person or a person's clothing because it can cause suffocation. Notice the location of the fire blankets. They are appropriate for use when a person's clothing catches on fire or on a small fire. Again, you should first pull the fire alarm and notify your instructor. To use the fire blanket, you should wrap it around the person, taking care to keep the flames from their face. When covering a small fire on the bench top or floor, use the blanket to smother the fire and put it out. Notice the location of the emergency safety shower and eye wash stations. The safety shower is appropriate for use when a person has been exposed to a large chemical spill on themselves or their clothes or when their clothes have caught fire. The eye wash is appropriate for use when a person has splashed chemicals in their eyes. Safety glasses should always provide the first line of defense for protecting your eyes, but the eye wash may be needed when splashes occur behind the safety glasses. To use the safety shower, you should pull the handle to release water from the shower head. The person should remain under the flow of water until help arrives. To use the eye wash, you should push the release next to the eye wash sink and keep it engaged. The person may require help getting to the eye wash station and holding their eyes open into the flow of water. Be sure to flush the eyes for at least 10 minutes or until further help has arrived. As before, contact your instructor as soon as the incident occurs. At some time during lab, an accident may occur that requires emergency personnel. Various emergency phone numbers are posted in lab. However, you may need to use your cell phone to make the call. Phones are not located in lab. Your instructor may ask that you contact the main office for assistance. Notice the location of the primary exit door. It is next to the coats and book bag storage, opposite the door you came in. In the event of a fire, you should first pull the fire alarm and notify your instructor, then calmly gather your belongings and attempt to exit the primary exit door. 
If the path is not blocked, you would exit the laboratory and proceed right down the hallway. At the end of the hallway, you would turn right and proceed down the stairwell. Once down the stairwell, proceed through the double set of doors and turn right to exit the building. Once outside, you would proceed through the grassy area and gather with your class and the instructor next to the fence. If the primary exit is blocked, you would proceed through the secondary exit door, which is the door you entered from, and follow the instructions of your instructor to safely exit the building. Note that this door is the entrance to a prep room and is not an emergency exit. In all emergency situations, you should remain calm and listen for instructions from your instructor. Here is the location for the disposal of broken glass. Clean up any broken glass with a broom and dustpan. Do not place broken glass in the regular trash can. Do not put your hands inside the broken glass container to retrieve something accidentally thrown in. There are several types of waste containers that you will be required to know about. Heavy metals, such as silver, need to be placed in a heavy metal waste container. Note the green sticker indicating the presence of a heavy metal. This same sticker will be on the reagent bottle. Other metal ion waste will go into the inorganic waste container. Nonmetals will go into the organic waste container. Any waste containing a chlorinated solvent, such as methylene chloride, will need to be placed in a special container as well as any waste containing iodine. These two waste containers may not be located in your lab. First you will check the hose and its connections and then turn on the valve on the desk. Open the needle valve on the burner approximately a quarter of a turn or until you hear the gas. Quickly use a striker to light the burner. Make sure to keep your hands back. Adjust the needle valve first, if needed, so you have a flame that's about 4 inches high. Then adjust the air ports so you have a blue flame with an inner cone. At the end, you may have to readjust the height of the flame and or the color of the flame. Here is a demonstration of the proper way to weigh out a solid. First, start with a weigh boat and tear the balance. Use a scupula to obtain the amount of solid needed. If too much is used, do not put it back into the original container. This could contaminate the entire bottle. Dispose of any extra in the appropriate waste container. Obtaining liquids is much the same. Pour a small amount of the liquid into a small beaker or other appropriately sized container. Use a pipette to transfer the amount of liquid you need. Dispose of any extra liquid in the appropriate waste container. Do not pour it back into the original container as this could contaminate the entire bottle.